Welcome to my channel. My name's Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today, we're going to talk about the Land Cruiser, the Model T, and a little bit about the Honda. Uh, so first off, you might notice it's very cramped in the garage today, uh, and that's because it's been raining. So for those of you that don't know, I live in Southern California, and where I live, it very rarely rains. Uh, there are only three months out of the year when it could actually possibly rain. That's our rainy season. And during those three months, you might only get a handful of rains. So all year long, we might only get sometimes three, four, five rains all year. Uh, so I get kind of lazy with storing things outside, uncovered and unprotected. Um, but then when it does rain, you know, I'm quickly trying to cram everything indoors or put tarps over things. So anyway... Uh, it's cramped in here, and then I also have the Model T over here to get it out of the rain. So I'll do a quick update on that as well, because there's some new stuff going on there. But okay, so the Land Cruiser. If you saw the last build video, you would have seen that I repaired this rocker panel. So I cut off the old panel, treated the rust, sandblasted it, replaced some metal, and then welded this back on. Uh, and I used the weld through primer and the rust reformer inside of there to protect it uh, and then also after I welded this on I came in from back here and then also from underneath there's kind of a drain hole an existing drain hole under there and so I sprayed in that inner frame sealer that green stuff that I sprayed back there so hopefully that's going to that coated hopefully the back side of that weld and that's going to prevent it from rusting so we'll see how that works out um, I also patched that hole and replaced this upper uh, fender well but i didn't go into depth on that in the video because i already have that shown in the video where i did that side um, this fender well went in fine no real issues there i did on that side i mentioned i had to extend it on the back so it's a little bit short on this side it was also short but what i did was i straightened out this bend to get the right length and then i rebent it so i added that it's like maybe an eighth of an inch or something, but I added that on this side instead of having to cut the back and weld it and add it back there. So that went a little bit smoother. Um, I also had a lot of, I guess I wouldn't say troubles, but I spent a lot of time on this section. So even though it wasn't in the video, I spent a couple days on this area. So after replacing this lip here for the, the fender, which somebody had cut out to put flares on it, uh, it wasn't exactly straight. And this, if you, if you pulled on this, it would pop out. And if you pushed on it, it would pop in. But it didn't want to be in the center. It wanted to be in or out. And it was popping in and out. And then there was kind of an oil can effect here where this metal would pop in and out. Uh, and some of that may have been due to the fact that I didn't go slow enough when I was welding in that patch. But I think even before that, this piece didn't wasn't quite right. Um, so it just it took me a very long time. I kept having to make relief cuts in it to help the metal contract and fit but it came out really good i mean it's completely stiff now um obviously there's going to be a thin coat of bondo over the whole body to cover all these areas where it's been welded um, but overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this came out and i think it's pretty straight so that's all looking good uh the next step on this one is going to be repairing this floor pan and then also um, replacing that outer rocker panel on that side and then there'll be a few other small things to finish up, the dash and a few other little spots on the floor that need to be addressed. But then I will be ready to move on to the bodywork. And hopefully that won't take too long, but then we'll be ready to paint this thing. And that is going to be amazing when this thing finally gets painted and set back on the frame. Um, so, okay, that's the Land Cruiser. Real quick on the Honda, just because it's in here, I'll give you a quick update. This car is running great. I drive it all the time. I absolutely love it. Um, there are a few little things that I still want to do to it. The throwout bearing makes some noise, but I got to pull the engine to do that. There's a few leaks on the engine where I should have used some, some more sealant that I didn't use. I put the gaskets on dry and I should have used a little bit of sealant, I think, in a few areas. So there's a few things like that that I, I should address. Uh, but I enjoy driving the car so much, I just don't want to take it apart and then not be able to drive it. So I'm just kind of letting it go for now and just enjoying it. Um, but yeah, so that's the Honda. I've got it inside out of the rain, so it's in here. 
the 356, like I said before, I'm waiting on some parts. Um, but basically, I've just got a few other things I'm going to finish up before I get back to the 356. But I will get back on this soon. So it's just in here under this plastic since I've been grinding and painting on the Land Cruiser. But okay, so the Model T. And then also real quick, these are the, uh, these are the seats for the Land Cruiser. So I'm getting ready to start cleaning those up um, and kind of test fitting those since I'm kind of at that point on the body for the Land Cruiser. But okay, so here's the Model T. And yeah, as you can see, it's been raining. But the Model T's nice and dry. It fits kind of perfectly under this cover. Okay, so first of all, the Model T videos have become very popular all of a sudden. They just, the uh, YouTube algorithm must have decided to promote these videos and all of a sudden this thing just took off. Um, so thank you guys. And if you're new to the channel, there is going to be a lot more to come on the Model T. Uh, I still have to repair the roof and do the interior. And so there's still a lot to come. Uh, but I have also been doing a few little things and have a few little things to do on it to kind of get it running and driving better so in the last video for this you would have seen that um, it ran and the wheels turned i believe you saw that in the video but basically um, i made really good progress on it i got it running since then i have driven it a very little bit i drove it down the street and back maybe a few blocks away um, I did actually get it into high gear, which was pretty wild. There's a pretty huge jump between low gear and high gear. And if you don't know, this only has two speeds. There's a, a low gear forward and a high gear forward, and then there's just reverse. And it's operated by pedals. And, you know, you, I'll go into that some other time, but the middle pedal is reverse. The left pedal is kind of a clutch. This thing is kind of a shifter. Anyway, it's crazy. Um, but so, uh, in my last update video where I talked about this car, I mentioned that the head bolt, the center one, was stripped. Uh, I was able to put the helicoil in there. That worked out fine. I was able to torque this back down. Now all the head bolts are torqued at 40 pounds. Um, and I may, if I have to, I can go higher. The reason that I'm not going too strong on the torquing, like up to 50, 55 pounds, is because I don't want to strip any of them out. Um, but when I had it at 35 uh, pounds, I was getting coolant into the cylinder, I believe. So when I was trying to get it to run, I noticed a little bit of moisture in the number one cylinder. And then later I noticed uh, a little bit of the oil was a little bit white, not, not all the way through, but just kind of on the edges there was a, of the oil pans, a little bit of white frothiness in the oil, which would indicate that it has some water in it. Um, and the only way the water can get through to the oil is through the cylinder. There's no passage um, between the head and the block for oil. So oil never gets into here. So the oil and water can't mix through the head gasket like it would on a lot of engines. The water has to get into the cylinder and then drain into the block. So that I believe was happening because the head wasn't torqued tight enough. So I tightened it, I tightened it down, stripped this. And so now we're working our way up. We're at 40 PSI, hopefully that's gonna work. Um, the other issue that I'm having is oil leaks. This thing is leaking a lot of oil. And it seems to mostly be coming from around this oil pan gasket here. And you can see these bolts all have cotter pins in them, right? So they have castle nuts and cotter pins. And when I took it apart, none of these cotter pins were in there. Uh, and I'm starting to realize why. The problem is with this setup, you can't really get the torque that you want on these bolts because if you tighten it too tight, then you, you're gonna, it's a, it's like a copper, or I mean, it's a, um, it's a, uh, oh, what, uh, what's the word I'm working for? Anyway, you don't wanna crush the gasket too much. Um, it's a cork gasket, there we go. So it's a cork gasket, you don't wanna over tighten it, or that'll make it fail. Um, but I had to kind of loosen some of them to get these cotter pins to go in. So some of them are not as tight as I wanted. So uh, I just bought a bunch of new bolts. Come over to this side. Maybe the lighting will be better. Okay. So, well, I can't see a lot over here either because of the car. But I just bought um, a bunch of new bolts and I bought some uh, locking nuts. The kind that are kind of crushed, kind of um, out of round shape so that they, they go on really tight on the bolt. So I'm going to be able to... I'm going to replace all these bolts and I'm going to be able to tighten them down and lock them in place without having to use these cotter pins. So hopefully that's going to help with some of the oil leaks. Um, but I mean, I would imagine this thing is probably going to leak 
a little bit, no matter what I do. The carburetor leaks a little bit, so I'm still kind of trying to address that as well. Um, but it does run good. I mean, the nice thing is I'm able to drive it in and out of here now instead of pushing it. So that's a that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, so let's see. I think oh, the other issue that I'm having is the ignition. So let's see. Well, it's not in a place where it buzzes now, but um, let's see, maybe I can get it to a place where it'll buzz real quick to show you what's going on. So if you don't know, there's a timer on here and some of them for some reason seem to buzz all the time. But other cars like mine, there it is. So this is the problem, see? So you can see it's buzzing now because now it's, it's at the right location on the timer. But here's the problem with the ignition. The key unless it's in just the right place, doesn't make contact. So if you were to drive this thing, you'd hit a bump and it would just shut off. Uh, I bought a new ignition switch, this whole plate, but it was an aftermarket one and it wasn't very good quality at all. I hated the way that it felt, the key looked cheap and didn't go in very well. So I didn't want to put that in the car. But so now I'm going to need to take this one out and take it apart and then try to clean up and fix the connections in here so that it makes a consistent connection instead of being kind of hit or miss on there. But anyway, so, oh, also, um, well, I guess there's still a lot going on in this. Um, another thing that I'm doing on this car, so you can see it in here, the exhaust manifold, uh, somebody welded this plate on here and then they welded a plate onto the exhaust pipe and they put a gasket in here. And this is awful, it doesn't seal at all. It also blocks the hogshead here from coming off, which means you can only take the hogshead off if you take the manifold off. And you have to take this hogshead off uh, occasionally to redo the linings and the transmission. So it's kind of a thing you need to do to be able to service stuff is get this off. So anyway, this is all wrong. It has a terrible exhaust leak. So I've ordered a new or I have already a new um, exhaust manifold and exhaust pipe and the big nut that screws on here. And I'm also, you can see, I'm also getting an exhaust leak here. And people have said not to use this style of gasket. There's an exhaust leak there too. Looks like all of them are leaking actually. Um, but so I now have the uh, other style. It's kind of like a copper ring uh, gasket that I'm gonna put on this exhaust manifold. Well, and the intake manifold. So anyway, Hopefully, I'm going to be able to fix the oil leak soon, the exhaust leak soon, and the ignition switch issue soon. So I'm going to try to address all that while I've got it here in this workspace and also while I'm protecting it from the rain. So uh, I'll let you guys know how that goes and how it's running afterwards. Now the next build video for this car, I don't think is going to be until I do the top. I don't think I'm going to do a build video for all these little things that I'm repairing. This will just kind of happen in the background and you can find out about it on these update videos. So it'll be a little bit longer before I get to a build video. That'll be when I do the top and then from there we'll move on to the interior. Um, but I will keep giving you updates on this car on my Sunday update videos. So even if there's not a build for this car that week, I may still update you on it on the Sunday update video. So stay tuned for those. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. This turned into kind of a long update video, so sorry for rambling on so much. But that's the Model T, the 356, the Honda, and the Land Cruiser. Okay, so that's all for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Bye.